everybody. It's a fine winter day here in Idaho. A little cold and snowy outside, so today we're gonna work inside. Uh, this morning we're gonna make the perfect salami. Had so many people asking for it, how I do it, so on and so forth, so I just decided, you know what? The secret's out. I'm gonna show you the recipe step by step how I do it, and you two can make the best tasting and the easiest salami to make. So we'll get into it here shortly. So this is pretty simple. I'll go over the items that I'm gonna use in my batch. Um, there's a lot of things you can add for your own flavor, your own tastes, whatever your preferences are. But here's the basics. I'm gonna add about three cups of cheese. I'm doing a 15 pound batch. I put about a cup per five pounds. I'm gonna put a few jalapenos in, probably get roughly a little over a cup of jalapenos. Uh, they'll be seeded and deveined to get all the heat out of them. I'm basically after flavor, not heat. Um, I'm gonna put some uh, green olives in mine. And this is our seasoning. This is uh, High Mountain Seasoning out of Wyoming. I'll put the link in the description. And uh, here's the cure that goes in that. It comes from the same company. Uh, the recipe calls for 10 ounces of the seasoning and 4.2 ounces of the cure for every five pounds. The key to good salami is good meat. Uh, my salami that I'm building today is gonna be half pork and half elk. I do mine in a 50-50 batch. Uh, but the key is good quality meat. You know, a lot of people save the scraps and the trim. They're like, oh, we'll make salami or sausage out of that. Well, if you're using marginal cuts and marginal meat, you're gonna expect a marginal product. So I'm using super good sirloin roast off an elk and sirloin off of a pork. Dicing the meat's pretty simple. I usually aim for, oh, just cubit inch or so squares. Uh, just cut it off. I'm just gonna cube it up like so. You can see that's pretty quality piece of elk meat right there. So that's gonna go in. I'll give you an example of my pork. This pork sirloin is also pretty quality. You don't need to worry about trimming the fat or anything on this. It's fairly lean pork to start with. You want to have a little fat in there. It just helps make your salami that much better. But same thing, I'm just going to cut these like so and uh, cube them up. Okay, I've got my meat all diced up now in the bowl. I'm just going to kind of give it a mix here. Okay, we'll continue to work here. We'll go through some jalapenos to show you how I take care of mine. Uh, like I said, I'm not about the heat. I'm about the flavor. If you want a little more heat in your stuff, then you can leave a few seeds in. You know, I just lop that end off, and you can see it's got the seeds and the veins in there. I just grab onto that with my thumb and pull those veins and those seeds out. Okay, now that I've got them all de-veined and de-seeded, I'll show you what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna cut these into narrow strips. Okay, now the next thing is this little gem. It's called the Presto Salad Shooter. This thing is awesome. I could sit here and dice all these by hand and take me a little while. But I'm just going to load these in to the hopper. Alright, that works so well for our jalapenos. We're going to try the same process for our green olives. I said we're looking for oh, a cap cup or so. Yeah, that might be pretty close. Let's give that a whirl and see how these come out. Okay, there's one thing we need to do right off that I kind of forgot about, and that's our casings that we're gonna stuff our salami in. These are mahogany casings. I get them from LEM Meat Products. The link will be down in the description. But uh, you wanna get these things soaking right off the bat in some hot water. Um, that'll soften them up and help them stuff better so they don't tear or helps you get just a little more uh, inside of them. But I got a pitcher here with some hot water. I'm just going to set those aside. At this stage of the video, I think it's time for a proper introduction. I'd like to introduce you to Rex. Uh, that's short for T-Rex. Uh, this big old grinder has been in my family for years. My father inherited it from a relative that was a meat processor, a butcher, and I inherited it from my dad and this thing will eat whatever I put in it, thus the name T-Rex. Now one thing you'll notice that I've added here 
That's a foot pedal. Um, that foot pedal acts as a third hand, so I can just step on that and run my grinder. If you don't have a foot pedal for your grinder, I highly encourage it. That just is a time saver and really helps out, especially when you're stuffing. But when you're grinding, it helps as well, so. Just gonna be grabbing a handful of meat and stuffing it in there. And you see that burger ground up pretty good. It's fairly mixed. Uh, it's going to mix a lot more as soon as I put it in my, my mixer with all my spices and everything. So we'll be ready to go with that. Okay, one of the things they don't tell you when it comes to spices, and I think it's the key to making the best sausage, salami, jerky, whatever you're making that requires any kind of seasoning. Usually you have to add water. So a 15 pound batch, you have to add 12 ounces of ice cold water. So here's the secret. I've got my 12 ounces of water here. This is my seasoning. I'm putting my seasoning in the water. Putting my cure in the water. And then I'm gonna just mix that up really good. Now there's gonna be more curing and more seasoning than will dissolve in 12 ounces of water. But at the end of the day, you have a wet, wet slurry of your seasoning. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna spread throughout your meat as we add it in and we go to mixing. And you'll see that once I start mixing how easy and how good that mixes in. All right, so I've got a 20 pound mixer here. Uh, I'm gonna put my 15 pounds of meat in there and then go to mixing. It's fairly well mixed up now, but I'm gonna mix that meat, to get that pork and that elk all mixed in there in a good consistency so it's fairly even. Um, no big clumps of pork or no big clumps of elk before I put my seasoning in. I'm gonna give that a good mix. And just start adding that in a little at a time. Evenly pouring that over my mix. And you'll see how that's nice and wet. That's gonna mix in there a way lot better than if it's just dry and you sprinkle it in. You sprinkle that dry powder in there, you get lumps and clumps places where you have more seasoning than others. Okay, now we want to mix this through really good. We we'll give it a shot both directions and you see that mixes in there super good. All right, we'll start it with our jalapenos. We'll just sprinkle those in as we mix. Clean those out. All right, let's add some of our green olives in there. I can feel that meat starting to firm up as I go through that mixing process. Final addition is our cheese. Pull it out of the freezer here. I'm gonna start mixing a little cheese in there. Now that cheese being frozen will help cool your mix off as well. But you can see by that cheese being frozen as I mix, it's not gonna break that cheese down and turn it into a powder or anything like that. Okay, it's critical to explain something here. This is the 3 16 plate I use, and that's the blade. So the blade goes in first, the plate goes in second. Pushes the meat through and that plate will cut the meat. Okay, so as we're stuffing our casings, we don't want to be cutting anything. We don't want to cut the cheese up or extra grind on our meat. So we're going to put just a plate in there um, that will allow us to put the, the head on here and our stuffing tube. Now they make these type of plates for stuffing salami, sausage, that sort of thing. They have large holes in them. But as that auger pushes meat through, it will push it through and it's turning it. As it hits these edges, it can still shear it. So what I've done is I've taken one of these plates and I took a plasma torch and I cut everything off except the two critical parts. I left this little notch in the bottom and the top part on. So what that's going to do, there's a little notch right here that just goes in and clicks on that notch. I put my stuffing tube on there. You see there's no blade in there or anything, so there's a lot less areas for that meat or cheese to get uh, ground up into finer, finer pieces. So the process is pretty simple. We're just going to take a case, get the water out of it, open it up here. We're just going to slide it up on our, our uh, tube there. And I like to hold my thumb on it and create some tension to help stuff those as full as I can get them. 
So I'll just start loading product in there. Rex loves this meat. there pull that off and I give it a tight twist just like that now I'll take it over to my closure area and we'll put a crimp on it we'll put a hog ring on there all right so this is how we're gonna close these up I'm gonna twist this down here make it nice and tight then I have these hog ring pliers and I put a hog ring on there hog ring is great it saves a lot of time you see that makes a really nice closure. So I'm just going to cover these up with some saran wrap, uh, put them in the refrigerator, and uh, we'll pick up tomorrow after they've been able to sit in there and let the cure and everything work on them. Okay, they've been in the refrigerator overnight. I've got them out to room temperature. We're getting ready to take them out and put them in the smoker. All right, so we got the smoker set up out here in the garage today because we got uh, quite a bit of cold weather outside. So we got them in the smoker. We're gonna smoke them at 200 degrees, put smoke on them for a couple hours. Okay, it's important that you monitor your temperatures on your salami. Uh, you wanna pull them at 160 degrees. Okay, you're gonna find that your salami gets done. Seems like everyone has a little more time on it or less time, but anyway, when they're done and they're hot, what I do is I put them in an ice bath. So after I pull those things out of that cold water bath, I'll let them sit and dry for a bit before I wrap them. Um, but that cold water bath, it stops the cooking process and putting them in that cold water to cool them off, you don't lose any moisture uh, as they sit out in the open air to cool down. All right, once you got them all done, cooled off in the water, last step, we're going to wrap them up. It's a square piece of paper is all I use. It's got wax coating on the inside. It's Butcher paper. I get it from LEM. I can put it in my link as well. Okay, just gonna roll it up nice and tight. Tape on it. Salami. 2023. I put that on there just in case it gets lost in the freezer, but most of the time this salami doesn't last that long. But I want to know what I've got and when I've done it. Thank you for watching my videos. Uh, if it found it helpful, I'd appreciate it if you'd give me a thumbs up, hit that like button, subscribe, and share the video, uh, whatever you want, but the secret's out. Thanks for watching.